and my life has been strained. But in spite of everything I've been through, I still gotta say thank you. And Jesus said unto him, No man having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. You can't keep looking back holding on. What you did yesterday, what happened yesterday, what happened last week, can't keep looking back at that stuff. You ain't fit for the kingdom of God because see, when you keep looking back, you can't, you can't look ahead and see what God got for you to do. You got your mind on that stuff. You ain't got your mind on what God wants you to do. You're thinking about everything but what God says. And everything is more important to you than what he says because your mind is so cluttered with garbage. You know, just like you, every now and then you got to clean your sink, got to get stopped up, or, or cesspool got to be. That's how mine be sometimes with all the mess that happened yeah. last week, last year. <laughs> what he did, what she did, what they did, let them go. Yeah. Let them people go and you go on. Because you know what'll happen? You'll see them people and you'll be like mad. And then you know, you know what they made you mad about? You the one holding them. Yeah, you know, you look at them, David. You, you remember when you did it, you be like, what did I do to you? I don't know God. And you still <laughs> And it make you sick, make you have high blood pressure, man. And you be right here feeling all bad and sick. Go to the doctor, doctor can't find nothing wrong because it's you. It's you. you need to let go garbage that you're holding on to. Forget it and forgive them, people, and move on. Good, go on with it. Life is too short to be holding on to stuff. Is it, is it not? Second, it is. You people leaving this world cra like crazy. I mean, they be dying like, whoo. I ain't got time to keep holding on nothing. Even when my mother died, I looked at her and said, hmm, farewell, you, amen. I ain't have nothing on it with that woman, nothing. Because when I heard that she was dead, my, I heard the Holy Ghost said to me, no regrets. He said, no regrets, Barbara, you have no regrets. Everything, you, everything she did, you never held it, you let it go. And I know today that's why I'm blessed. I know I'm blessed because I have been able to let go of things that hurted me the most, people that hurted me the most. I can look at them red eye to eye, and they, it don't bother me no more. But at the time, I'd be hurting. They didn't know how bad I was hurting, but God allowed me to look at them and go on, and I couldn't understand why they would treat me that way. Because you do ask the question, why? But then God moved it. And when he moved it, it's gone. I got too many other things to think about. There's too many people I gotta pray for. There's too many people I gotta love. There's too many other things I wanna do for the kingdom of God. The Bible says no man is fit for the kingdom of God if you put your hand, and you can't drive your car looking back. You can't, you, you, you drive, you try driving your car looking back, you'll run to a wall or something out there on somebody else's car. Anything you do, you gotta look ahead. And ahead is the thing that God wants us to do so that we'll know what he wants. We'll know what he wants us to do. You can't do it looking back, amen? Amen. Let's move on. Second Corinthians chapter five. I'm gonna start at verse fifteen. And that and he, and that he died for. Where am I at? Chapter five. Okay. And that he died for all that that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again. Therefore henceforth know ye no man after the flesh. Yea, though ye have known Christ after the flesh, yet now henceforth know he. Know we him no more. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away, and behold, all things become new. When God said, once you come to him, he knew it's a process. Once you get born again, you know, people look for you to be changed like that. Oh, you go to church, I heard you got born again. They're looking for a big change. It don't happen overnight. It's a process. Oh, I know people go to church, they do this, do that. Yeah, well, them people, some of them in church still ain't got there. And been there for years. You got some people out there in the world getting there better, faster than something that's in the church. Right. But once you come to Christ and you're really sincere with him, he's going to mean business with you. The more you draw to him, he said, the more you draw to him, the more he's going to draw to you. But he wants us pure and clean inside our hearts. David was a man, and I'm cutting here because David was a man that was a, he was a man after God's heart. David loved the, the sh taking care of the sheep, and he loved the sheep, and he killed a bear, he killed a lion. And when those seven brothers looking good went before the king, they thought he, they, they, that uh, Samuel was on Samuel was on choose him. And Samuel asked the father Jesse, "Do you have another son?" He said, "Yeah, they're taking care of the sheep." He said, "Send him in." When David walked in, God told Samuel, "He's the one," and he crowned him as king. 
See, man look on the outer appearance, but you don't know what's going on in that person's heart. And while you sitting there harboring something, them brothers didn't like David. They harboring, they thought they would be it. But God looking at David and saying, he's he going to be my man. You, I never knew 28 years, or th almost 30 years ago, that I would be where I am today. I'd probably cuss you out if you tell me I would be a pastor. But see, God know my heart from then. He know he was preparing me for this then. Like he preparing you for something he going to have you to do. And you don't know. You know, like I even said to my sister, she took care of her husband. She took care of her brother. That was something, a mission that God had for her to do. So you don't never know what you're here for. You're here with a purpose. Do your best. And the Bible says, do it heartily unto the Lord. Whatever you do, do it to God. You ain't doing it for man to pat you on the shoulder. If you're doing it for that, then that's all the reward you're going to get. But if you did it, say, God, I'm doing the best I can. I, I'm serving you. I'm doing what I can. And I'm doing it. The Bible says, the Bible says, do everything you do, do it heartily unto him, that he be glorified. And then he said, you will be rewarded for what you're doing. He said, even though when you do things, you ain't got to go tell everybody what you do. He said, what you do is secret. He reward you openly. You know what the Bible says? He'll reward you. So you, we don't have to worry about, oh, God, nobody knows what I'm doing and I'm going through. God, keep doing what you're doing because thank God you're here to do it. Amen. And sometimes God will put you with the one that hurt you the most to help him. God said he'll bring your enemies to your footstool. Yeah, yeah, and the one that mistreat you, may, you may be the one that have to give them a glass of water. Oh, come on. Now, y'all don't hear what I'm talking about. That's why you keep your heart record. You don't know what path you're going to have to go through or what path them people that hurt you don't got to come back to you. And when they come back, if you ain't right, you ain't getting no reward. I ain't helping them because they did me this way, but then you ain't better, you ain't no better than them. Um, I know I'm teaching here today, all right. <laughs> Hebrews 6, turn to Hebrews 6 and read verse 10. I'm moving pretty good today. It's 1230. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 1030, 10, Hebrews 10, 6. Look at what it says here. Hebrews 6, 10. I'm sorry. I'm keep saying Hebrews 6, 10. For God is not unrighteous to forget your work and your labor love, which he has shown towards his name, and that he have ministered to the saints and do minister. God ain't forgetting not one eye old thing that you've done. <laughs> Whatever you're doing, people may forget you because they have a knack of saying, I forgot you did that. I forgot you. When I needed this, you, yeah, they forget. Yeah, them tell them they forget a lot because they don't want to say thank you. Some people don't even want to say thank you. So they, like they forgot. <laughs> I don't care how much you do for some people, they still think you should probably do more. And then the minute you say something to them, oh, girl, I didn't know you did that. I, I don't remember. But one thing, they can say they forgot, but God never forget. Everything you done, everything you said is recorded in the book. It is. It's in the book. Where you did it unto him, where you did it unto yourself, it's still recorded. And the day going to come, we all going to stand before God, and, and we're going to have to get an account of everything that we said and did. Everything is recorded from the time you did it until you leave out of here. That's why it's good to do good deeds, do good things. Don't care somebody else, you do right. Now, I'm teaching good here today. Don't do because somebody else did you wrong. See, your eye for an eye, where well, you slap me, I'm slapping the back. God said, vengeance, Romans 12, 19, say, God said, vengeance is mine. Let me repay him. I can take care of better than you. And when you see that, let me tell you, when you take care of baby, you know, hey, 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 they fall down, Jack, everything they have. Some of them lose everything they got because they mistreated God's child. God said, you're the apple of my eye. When you, somebody mess over you, they messing over God. No. But God said, I have not forgot to work a labor love, how you minister and what you did for my people. For my, and the reward will come. And many of you are going to see your latter years are going to be greater than your beginnings. Amen. Keep on walking with God and see when he bless you. Amen. I said, keep on walking with God and see when he bless you. Uh, before you receive your great blessing, the devil going to try to break you down, though. Oh, he's going to try to make you feel like this walk ain't worth you walking. It ain't worth you going to church. It ain't worth what you're going for. It ain't worth you reading that Bible. Oh, he's going to give everything he can to pull you away from doing what God has you to do. Many days, I feel like praying. I feel like reading the Bible. I feel like being in here. I feel like I ain't want to see nobody. There are days I ain't want to look at nobody. Because, you know, you, I go through things like everybody else do. But then once I come through that door, it had to lift me. It was the devil that was trying to weigh me down before I got here. 
But once I got it, he knew he had to go because he said, hey, she going with God, and I can't do nothing. And that's why you got to press. And once you get to there, how many of you know going out, coming to church sometimes, it was hard getting here? <laughs> how many times the enemy tried his best to get you on Sunday morning, or on Tuesday night, or even today? They uh, tried everything. You say, well, glad I made it. And every time you press, it's a blessing. It's a pressing in the blessing. Let me tell you why. Anytime the devil try to keep you out of something, press even harder because the blessing of that thing is going to be greater than you ever dreamed it to be. If you press in here, you're going to get a word, something going to help you to go on and get stronger. If you go up and you're doing exactly what the devil said, oh, I, I, I could have, I should have. I was at the beauty part and I was telling the girls, I said, isn't this funny how we circle, God, uh, circle everything, what we have to do. We know we got plans what I'm going to do today, tomorrow. Uh, next week I'm going to be on vacation. Uh, we got plans. We, we make plans for everything. But where God planned in your life? He should be the first thing that you do in the morning. Wake up and pray and read and spend time with him. But we put him on the back burner. He's the last thing in our lives. And it shouldn't be there. He should be the first. Circle, don't make no plans without him being in the center of your plans. We go, oh, I'm going away, and I wasn't coming to church, but I had to go to the gym. Uh, everything, you got to do something, everything. <laughs> I said, girl, where you been? Oh, you know, um, I, I know, Pastor, I ain't been in a while, but I got joined this exercise class, and, you know, uh, I got caught up doing it, and it, it takes a lot of my time on Sunday morning. I said, what, what's going to happen when you need Jesus? The exercise ain't going to help you. <laughs> she looked at me, she said, oh, you're right. Uh-huh, yeah, uh-huh. But they put everything before him, you know. People just got to have things they way, amen. God, for God is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor alone, but you do do. Okay, Joseph was a great man. He was something like Jesus. He forgave his brothers, and they sold him. Turn to Genesis, the beginning of the Bible, Genesis 45. And I'm going to start wrapping up a little bit. I have a lot more here, but I think you're getting it. Okay, before you go to the book, first of the book, okay, let me go here, and then while we're in the New Testament, amen? Okay, let's look at, while we still at Luke, look at Luke 23. The same book that we was in, Luke 23, over a couple of chapters. Hallelujah. And we're going to read verse 34 of that. In your home, study these verses, in, Okay. I like the text messages. I don't text, but I like getting messages. And I got a dear daughter here. She texts me, and I read every one of them. I be, I be looking for, get that phone, go, there. I go like, hey, man, I like to read them. I don't text now. I'm telling you, I don't look for no text back because I don't text. I don't text. I'm letting y'all know right now. Don't even look at me for no text because I don't do it. Okay? <laughs> Luke 23, 34. Okay, what it says here. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And they parted his raiment and cast it out. Listen, if Jesus had to look and forgive, we're going to have to, too. I mean, I know I quoted that scripture, but I want you to know where it is in the Bible for yourself. If God, if Jesus, they killed him, they crucified him, they beat him so bad he was unrecognized. They said the flesh was hanging from his body. Blood was everywhere. They beat it, that man so... They put stripes, 39 stripes, and it was for the healing of the people. But he went to the cross for every living soul. Even before we were born, he had went and died for us. And if he could look up to the Father and say, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they're doing. We have to do the same thing. Let people go that hurt you. Let them go. It's not even worth you carrying them. Let God take care of them. God took care of you. You don't hurt people. I don't hurt people. We all don't hurt somebody. And if he can forgive me for my mess, why can't I turn to somebody else for their mess that they did to me? Some, you, the Bible says, do unto others. You have them do to you. We want God to bless us. But it also says in the scripture here, how can your heavenly father forgive you when you can't forgive those that hurted you? Then he can't forgive you because you can't forgive them. Well, I go to God. I ask God to forgive but I can't forgive. But you ain't being forgive either. See, listen, you, you want God to forgive you, and you can't forgive somebody for what they did? God ain't forgiving you either. Amen? Let's look at um, 
Wow, 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 wow. Look at, um, I, I quote this one too, Romans 12, 19. The reason I'm giving them to you now because I want you to read these scriptures when you're home. 12, 19. I'm going to go up a little bit. I'm going to go up some. I'm going to go up to uh, verse. Uh, okay, let's go um, verse 14 of Romans 12. Bless them which persecute you, and bless and curse not. Rejoice with them that do rejoice, and weep with them that weep. Be of the same mind one towards another. Mind not high things, but esteem to men's of low estate. Be not wise in your own consent. Don't be wise in your own, how you going to mess up. Amen. Recompend to no man evil for evil. You don't do evil for evil because somebody do you wrong. Okay, these are scriptures from the Bible. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. If it be possible, as much as lies in you, live peaceable with all men. And that's one thing in my life I always loved peace, even before I got saved. I try to be a peace. I want, I, all my life, I hate confusion. I hate argument. I love peace. I love peace. It stirs my spirit. And I'm like, nothing bothers my spirit when I have to lay down and go to sleep. When I lay down, I want to go to sleep. I don't need to be laying there thinking about somebody and I should have not talked to them, I should have not did them that way. I love to live peace with people. Because it says, well, it lies within you, live peaceable with all men. And listen what verse 19 says, Dearly beloved, avenge not yourself, but rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. Let God repay people for what they do to you. And you go on and forgive them and you move on in your life. Why stagger with your life being stunted in something that you don't have to be stunted with? Stagger water stinks. And you'll eventually get this thing too because you're holding that stuff in. You will. You'll start stinking too. you start acting just, I mean, people got things on their mind, they're snapping. And you ain't did nothing to them, they just bite at you because they're unhappy. Hurt people hurt people. And if you can't let it go, you're going to be hurting other people like somebody hurt you. And they, them people probably ain't did nothing to you because somebody else did something, you taking it out on them. Let God take care of them. Amen? Amen. Let's move on. Amen. Okay, go to Genesis 45. I said 50, but I want to go to 45, and I'll be closing in a minute. Good, good, good. This is about Joseph. And I love this story about Joseph because he helped me with my walk when I first got saved. Because Joseph, uh, his brothers gave him away, sold him, and how he, um, I can just really go into the story. And I just know all Joseph's story, because that was how I lived uh, with Joseph, with Joseph. Amen? Joseph 45, verse 5 to 9, it reads like this. Now, for be not grieved, not anger with yourself, that ye sold me hither, for God did send me before you to prepare life. For these two years has the family been in the land, and yet there are five years in the which there shall neither be hearing nor um, harmless. And God sent me before you to preserve you a, a prosperity in the earth and to save your life by a great famine. So now it was not you that sent me hither, but God. And he has made me a father to Pharaoh and Lord over all his house and a ruler throughout all the land of Egypt. Hey, see, go up to thy father and say unto him, Thus thy, said thy, thy son Joseph, God hath made me Lord of all Egypt. Come down unto me, tarry. Let me tell you, I'm going to go to 15. I'm going to show you why. See, sometimes you don't know why you had to be the one chosen out of a family. And going out of, and when God chose you out of a family, it's always one he's going to chose out of a family to represent him. And because you have been the chosen one, you're going to catch all kind of hell. I'm preparing you now to carry some crosses that you say, God, I don't know, can I deal with this? But you're going to have to be the one. But God sent Joseph. Now go over to 50. I'm going to go back so, so I back myself. Go to 50, chapter 50, and I'm going to wind it up here and show you why God sent him there and how it happened, okay? Okay, 50. I'm going to start at verse 15, okay? And then Joseph's brothers saw that their father was dead. They said, Joseph will prevent hate us and will certainly acquit, acquit us all the evil which we did unto him. And they sent a message to Joseph saying, Thy father did command before he died, said, So shall he say unto Joseph, Forgive, I pray thee now, 
the trespassing of thy brother and thy sin, for they did unto thee evil. And now we pray thee, forgive the trespass of the servant of God, thy father. And Joseph wept when they spake unto him. And his brother also went and fell down before his face and said, You're his enemies. <laughs> and they said, Behold, we be thy servant. And Joseph said to them, Fear not, for I am in a place of God. For as for you, he thought evil against me, but God meant it unto good to bring to pass as is this day to save such peoples alive. Now therefore fear ye not, I will perish you and nourish you and your little ones, and be and he comforted them and spake kindly unto them. Joseph dwelt in Egypt, he and his father's house, and Joseph lived a hundred and ten years. Let me tell you something. Joseph is another scripture over here where Joseph saw his brother, he had to go in the room and cry. They, sometimes you, 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 people do you wrong. They don't recognize you like you recognize them. And they re Joseph recognized it was his brothers, but they didn't know him. See, he had grown up to be a man. And see, that's what happened in life. But see, what they thought they did for evil because they were jealous of him because uh, Jacob loved the Joseph more than he loved the others. And sometimes family can cause confusion in a home too. Come on, let's back it up a little bit. But even though with that confusion, God was in the making of that too. See, God be in a lot of things. He said even for the evil, for, for the day of something, he want to work something in there. So he allowed them to sell him, Joseph, to the Egyptian. And they sold him to Israel. And it went on from there. And Joseph was placed even in prison for two years for something he didn't do. Joseph went through a lot. But to save his family and so many other souls were saved through what Joseph had to go through. And so now you being the first one out of a family, you're going to have to pay the way for others. Jesus was the firstborn. He had to pay the way for the whole world. Amen. Praise God if God chose you to be the one to pay the way for your family so they all can come in and be saved. Amen. And you're going to pay a price for it. You're going to pay a price, but it's, it's a great reward for being good. And Joseph looked at him and said, you meant it for evil. God was in it for my good. I forgive you. You don't have to be a friend. So they thought after the father died, they, Joseph don't hate them and come back on them for something that they had done to him. Joseph said, no, 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 no. It ain't going to be like that. No, I'm here in a place. I'm, I, I, uh, God will made me be the ruler over Egypt. See, when God promotes you, can't nobody take that promotion from you. See, God promoted Joseph to be the king over all Israel. Pharaoh told me, anybody need anything, they got to go to Joseph for it. <laughs> Pharaoh one time didn't like Joseph, but look at it. God turn your enemies around. God will make your enemies bless you. God will reverse the curse and give you a blessing. Oh, you better come on here. Oh, you better come on, give God some praise. That's why it's not good to hold nothing in. Let it go. It ain't nobody worth me holding nothing. I, I made up my mind I ain't holding nobody because you ain't worth me holding it. Amen. I got to let you go. Let God, God says, and we just read Benjamin's mind. Let me repay. Let me take care of it. You trying to take care of somebody, that make you, if you taking and taking it on your own, doing your own, you're going to mess up. Amen. We mess up big time. Amen. And how many times you know we don't mess up and say, I should have let God take care of that. Amen. Why did I interfere? But we feel like we, I just had to do it. You didn't have to. I, I just had to have peace in my mind. I just couldn't hold it. No, because you let the devil control that mind, and you ain't got a peace of mind to leave out to nobody. Amen. Every piece of your mind, you need it. Amen. Amen. You don't need to give your mind out to nobody. <laughs> Many times I want to say something to somebody, and I'll be like, mm, let me just hold it. Let me hold my peace. It don't make no sense. Because all they're going to do is get you more and more, and before you know that you're in a big argument. I'd rather shut my mouth and let God take care of it. And just go on and forget about it and forgive them. Forget and forgive them. They're all right, it's okay. Well, okay, then they come back to me later, and they say, you know, I'm sorry, but I say, yeah, yeah, I know, I understand, I forgive you too, you know. But it's okay, because God be done did it. God wants to have a chance to turn your enemy's heart around. But he needs your heart to be right, so he can turn it around. If you're going to take matters in your own hand, then you're pushing God back. and say, I got it. God said, now you move back and let me come forth and let me take care of it. Amen? Amen? Everybody got something out of lesson today? Amen. How many of you are willing to let go some things? Because we all hold some things in. Let it go. It ain't worth you carrying it. And let God take care of it. Vision is his. God said he want to repay. He want to take care of it. Let him do it. He knows everything that goes on in our lives. There's not one single thing that's going on in your life. People that live in your house don't know what's going on with you like God do. Amen. Husband and wife can be together for 10 years. Oh, I know my husband. 
Mm-hmm. I know my wife. You don't know nothing. How many people thought they'd know each other? And they wind up. <laughs> you know, I was thinking about <laughs> going back to Tom Cruise. That woman left him like the hot tomato. He told my, I thought we was in love. I thought he had, <laughs> had another plan. He left that man just like that. So you can live with people who don't know him. You can live with people who don't know him. God bless you. And thank you for tuning in to this week's broadcast. What an awesome word from the woman of God. I know that word was meant for you, just as that word was meant for me. I know things may seem a little hard in your life right now, and it may seem like there's no way out, but I'm here to tell you today that there is a way out, and that way is Jesus Christ. So if today's word really moved you, and God is tugging at your heart, I ask that you repeat this simple prayer with me. Say, Father, forgive me for all my sins. Come into my heart and live in me and help me to live for you. Father, I believe that your son Jesus, he died, but you rose him from the dead. Father God, I accept, make it personal, I accept your son Jesus as my personal Lord and Savior to serve him all the days of my life. And if you said that simple prayer, Jesus Christ is a spirit and he's coming to your heart and your life will begin to change. It may not be immediately and it may not be overnight, but your life will begin to change. And if you or someone that you know is in need of prayer, the number is on the screen. And if you're ever in our area, we invite you to come and fellowship with us. And if you really enjoyed today's broadcast and you'd love to see it continue, we ask that you send a small donation. Just remember, a little goes a long way and you are definitely sowing on good ground. So as always, we thank you, we love you, God loves you, and be blessed.